uh, I am Paola from Catalysti, and we are very happy to welcome um, uh, Kati Pelkonen uh, from Kuvasto, uh, and uh, we are lucky to have her with us today to tell us more about this organization and the uh, copyright for visual artists. And if you have questions, you can type them in Facebook, and we will uh, transmit them to Kati. Thank you. Thank you. And the presentation, uh, can you, the present, my presentation, there, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so my name is uh, Kati Pelkonen and I will tell you about Kuvasto, which is Copyright Society for Visual Artists here in Finland. Um, a few words about Kuvasto. Uh, we are a not-for-profit association that was founded by artists themselves. Uh, more than 30 years ago, um, we have 10 member organizations, they are all uh, artist associations. For example, Finnish Artist Association is uh, one of our members. And then there are nine others. Ave Arki is the newest member organization that we have. So we have uh, associations as members and the artists that we represent, they are our clients actually. So we are a little bit different organization in that sense, like a, not a normal association. And at the moment we represent more than uh, 2,700 visual artists living and working here in Finland. And approximately 100,000 uh, foreign artists uh, uh, due to our international sister society network. But here in Finland we represent Mm, a little bit less than 3,000 visual artists at the moment. And our mission is of course to look after the visual artists' rights and to promote um, the conditions for, for the artistic work here in Finland. Secondly, uh, we, um, our mission is to ena enable and facilitate uh, the use of visual art, which means that we want to make the uses of visual art much easier for the users and artists themselves. Basically this means our licensing work that we do on behalf of artists. Uh, who can join Kuvasto? Basically any visual artist living and working in Finland who has created an independent and original visual artwork. That's the first and only criteria basically. Uh, we don't collect any joining or membership fees, so in that, sen in that sense joining is free of charge. But it's not completely um, free, of, free of charge, and I will explain you later why. Some of our services um, do, do cost in a way. And as I mentioned, uh, artists who join Kuvasta, they are our clients. And you know that copyright extends to 70 years after the death of artists. So we also represent the deceased uh, artists, or more likely the right owners of the deceased artists. But, but the majority uh, of our clients, they are um, professional living and, uh, living and working artists here in Finland. Um, I have a few slides about copyright basics, uh, so I will guide you through that. Uh, I think it's always good to remind you of the Copyright Act, because that's the basis of our work, work too. So copyright protection is automatic. You don't have to reg register your work. It's automatic when you have created the work. So as soon as the work has a fixed material form, it, it will get protection. The only criteria is that it's original and independent. Nobody else could have done it the, exactly the same way as you did it. Uh, it's good to remember that copyright protects the form, not ideas. Only the form. Uh, and also, uh, uh, when we are talking about visual art, there's no high artistic quality needed. Uh, in, in that sense, bad art can, can, can get um, copyright, pre copyright protection as well as this kind of like high quality fine art. So professionals and amateurs, they can get uh, copyright protection in the same way, as long as the work is independent and original. So in this sense, Copyright Act 
or this legislation is very neutral to the quality. We are not talking about the quality of art. Uh, and that means that also a sketch for an incomplete work can get protection. So it doesn't have to be a finished work to get protection. The duration of the uh, copyright is 70 years here in Finland and in most of the countries after the artist's death. Uh, ordinary photos, uh, for example the photos that we all take with our mobile phones, they can be considered ordinary photos. They do get uh, copyright protection as well, but uh, the du duration is shorter. It's only 50 years and it starts from the moment the photo was actually taken. So it differs. Differs from, the, from visual artworks in that sense. Uh, copyright can be, uh, or sorry, copyright is divided into in moral rights and in economic rights. There are three moral rights which are equally important to uh, economic rights. The paternity right or maternity right means that the artist need, needs to be identified every time the artwork is used. For example, if an image of an artwork is published on a book, the artist's name has to be published along with the book. That's, the artist is entitled to that. Then there's a right of integrity. Uh, it means that the artwork cannot be altered, for example cropped, or the colors cannot be changed without the permission of the artist. Uh, also, the context um, where the image is used. For example, uh, if the image is used in a political or in an advertising campaign, that might offend the, the artist's uh, uh, moral rights. And that's why the, the, that kind of use always needs permission from the artist. Then uh, the third one is a Finnish curiosity, the right to access. This is uh, particular to Finnish copyright, access, uh, copyright Act. It means that the artist has a right to visit and document a work even after the work has been sold. If you, if you will need to document that work. But of course you will need the name of the owner as well and you need to basically know where your work is. But this is a right that belongs to you according to the Finnish Copyright Act. Uh, the economic rights. This is the, these are the rights that we manage actually on behalf of the artists. Mm, these are very important and they mean that usually in these cases permission is needed and the artist is entitled to royalties if, if uh, these rights are being used. Reproduction means um, all sorts of copies made of the artwork. For example, using an image of an artwork in a book or in posters, in postcards, all sorts of copies. Uh, public exhibiting is, uh, is about making, uh, making the artwork available to the public without any uh, technical device. For example, when an artwork is exhibited in an art exhibition, that's about public exhibiting. That's a public exhibiting right. Uh, distribution means uh, that copies of the work can be distributed by lending or selling. An artwork can be sold, for example, or lended. Public performance applies to music and uh, media arts, for example. It means that the work is made available to the public with some technical device. For example, when a video uh, artwork is being screened, you need a technical device to do that. You need to project it. So this is, it's called public performance. And then the last one is communication to the public. Uh, when um, a work is broadcasted in a TV or film production, for example, or when it's uh, communicated uh, on a website, for example. This it's, it's about communication uh, to the public. And all these rights, um, when they are used, the, you normally need, need a permission from the artist if you want to make a reproduction or if you want to exhibit the work publicly or if you want to communi communicate the artwork to the public on a website, for example. 
However, there are some limitations in, in the Copyright Act. It means that in some cases uh, the artist rights are limited. Um, so, you, so the user doesn't need a permission from the artist. It's free, the, the use is free of charge. But the moral rights need to be respected. That means the work cannot be altered and the name of the artist has to be mentioned. Private coping is one of them. We all have the right to do some copies of the artwork for private use. I can download images from uh, from internet on my computer and use them privately. But if I want to share them, that's a different thing. If I want to share them online, then I will need a permission from the artist. But private use is basically that's that's uh, accepted by law. Uh, an artwork can be used in an academic article or in an art view art review as a quotation that's uh, uh, and that's the, the writer doesn't need a permission from the artist in this kind of case the media has a right to report a current event and use an image of an artwork if it's if it has a connection to the current event and then um, exhibition organizers they also have the right to use Images of the artworks uh, when they are uh, in their communications and marketing of that exhibition. But this means before the exhibition starts and during the exhibition. Afterwards, if they still want to continue using the image, they will need permission. So this applies only only the time before the ex uh, before the exhibition and during the exhibition. The fifth is, is secondary status. Um, if uh, if an image is being, if an artwork uh, will be photographed so that the focus is uh, on something else in that photo, for example, there's a person uh, in front of the artwork, so that's a secondary status uh, use, use it for that image and it's allowed uh, during, uh, due to these limitations. The only criteria is that the artist doesn't own that artwork anymore and so that the artist has permanently given, given that um, artwork away or he or she has sold the artwork and, and the artwork shows in the picture in a secondary status form. The last one is public artworks. We can all take images or, or take photographs of public artworks. And we can use them also, but non, in a non-commercial way. If, there's a, if the images of public artworks are used for, public, uh, for commercial purposes, then permission is needed from the artist. They are, um, but otherwise, it's, it's uh, okay. okay and free to use images of public artworks. That's very uh, brief talk about the copyright basics. But uh, next, um, I will tell you more about what we do in Kuvasto for, for artists. And please feel uh, <laughs> free to ask any questions anytime. Um, because sometimes these things are complex. So our operations can be divided in three sections. The first is lobbying. We do a lot of influencing work on legislation issues. Uh, we manage the rights on behalf of artists. It means that we collect and pay royalties to artists that we represent. And then the third uh, is communications on uh, copyright. We try to increase the awareness on copyrights here in Finland among artists and among users as well. Um, we do this uh, influencing work both on international and domestic level. Uh, we have a really wide uh, international sister society network and we collaborate with them. Um, we have a representative in EU, in European Union, which is called U uh, European Visual Artists. And that association promotes uh, artist rights in the European Union. For example, and we support them, of course, and and um, work to, uh, work together with that association. One of the 
most important objectives at the moment is the DSM directive, which is known also as copyright directive. That's a, that means a big change uh, in many European Union countries, but also here in Finland, to our Copyright Act. Um, that will be implemented next year and we've been following this process uh, of, from the beginning and this has taken several years and now, now we are finally coming to the end of it and it's a very important uh, legislation. Mm. The third is artist reset rights, uh, which is promoted by, by a global association called CISAC. We are a member of CISAC and the objective is to get this artist reset right uh, universally, universal in a way that it, it would exist in all over the world. At the moment it, this right exists in um, 80 countries in the world, but for example the biggest art sales countries, United States and China, they, are, they don't have this right in their legislation. So one of the objectives is to get them, is to get this right to, the, to their legislation as well. And Kuvasta Sop supports this aim, of course. Um, last but not least, there's a new project call, called House for Visual Arts. This means that um, this is a mutual project that we are involved with, with other artist organizations and artist associations here in Finland. And the aim is to have a house for completely for visual artists. Mm. But this is a very new, new um, uh, project, and hopefully that will we will end up with a with a building for visual arts here in Helsinki. The main sources of income for visual artists here in Finland, at least, are the salary, art sales, grants, and royalties. And we concentrate on royalties, so we collect and pay royalties to artists, because we believe that visual artists are entitled to royalties every time their their work is being used, in the same way as writers, musicians, or other performing artists. So visual artists are just as entitled to royalties. And and how do we manage the rights? Uh, when an artist joins Kuvasta, um, he or she does an agreement with us and the artist becomes our client that we represent. And this agreement gives us the permission to, to give uh, grant permission uh, for users to use, use the artworks, so we can license the work. Uh, of course, uh, if you, you become a Kuvastas client and you will still want to license your work by your own, for example for commercial pur purposes, that's completely fine. Our uh, only uh, wish is that you inform us about it, that, that you will manage your own rights as well, at the same time as Kuvasta. And all our clients, of course, they have always the right to give permission for non-commercial uses. It's free of charge. That's if you, for example, if you want to support some, um, some association and they have an advertising campaign but they are a, but they are a non-commercial or this kind of not-for-profit association, you want, you want to support it and you don't want to uh, get any royalties from that, you can actually give your permission yourself for that kind of use. It's, Mm. So we collect royalties for our clients, but there are several hundreds of artists that get or receive royalties every year from Kuvasto, and they are not our clients. And this is because we have this collective license agreement. Mm. These are uh, basically agreements made with museums, for example, uh, about their collections. When a museum wants to mm, wants to uh, publish their collections, art collections, on their website, for example. We have, a made, we have made an agreement with them, with this collective license agreement, which means that they can do it and they don't need to ask permissions from every artist. That our, our agreement covers that. 
and who was the pays royalties to all of these artists that are covered by the agreement. And we have done this kind of uh, agreement, for example, with the National Gallery. They have opened their art collections on, on, on their websites, and there are about 900 um, artists who get royalties every year due to this agreement. And they are not all our uh, clients. They're, they have not yet joined Kuvasta, but they still get, um, still get uh, royalties. And when we do this collective license, license agreements uh, with museums or, for example, with, with a TV ch channel, uh, the artists always have the right to deny the usage if they, want, if they don't want to. But this hasn't happened basically ever. Like I, from at least my experience is that this hasn't happened ever. That the artists and the users, they have always been very, very happy with this, with these agreements. Um, pay the royalties to artists mainly once a year, starting from June. Uh, and um, mm, yes, that's that's due to this um, financial report that we do every every year as a, as an association. But if the amount of royal royalties is bigger than five hundred euros, then we can of course pay it quicker to the artist if the artist needs it or wants it and informs that that uh, we uh, he or she needs it. Before the before we do these payments, um, when we pay the royalties, a percentage is deducted from the payment. This is to cover our expenses because we are not profit, not for profit association and we don't get any public funding. So this is to cover our expenses. And at the moment, the percentage is twenty two percent. And that's why I said in the beginning that it's com it's not completely free of charge to be a client. Uh, and then there's an example. For example, last year we paid uh, almost half a million euros uh, to artists, and an average um, amount of royalties was about 449 euros per artist that we paid. The main sources of royalties are reproductions, um, so making copies of the work, uh, exhibition rights remuneration that we collect royalties from the exhibitions, and then the true artist artist reset right. These are the main sources that we collect royalties from. And next, I will explain you more about these <laughs> these different sources, how we do it. Mm. Copyright licensing, that means secondary use of images. It means that the artwork has to be, the artwork exists already. And an image of that artwork is being used in a book or in a film production, on a website or in a mug, or for example in a postcard or in a, in a t-shirt or, or on a canvas bag, then a license is needed and, and we'll give that license on behalf of artists. And basically licensing mean, means in this sense that we do the pricing of that use, we determine the terms of usage, uh, for how long time the user can actually use that image on the website, for how, for how long period. Uh, we do the billing and then the end, the payment to the artist. This is, uh, in a, this is in, in a very simple way <laughs> to describe the licensing process. For the user it's quite uh, easy and flexible because the, um, uh, the user can actually request permission online. We have an online form that can be filled. And in many cases, the online form also shows the price for that license, how much it costs for the user. And, mm -hmm. if, and if there's a request uh, that uh, concerns moral rights, the artwork will be cropped 
or altered, altered in, in, in a way, or if the artwork is being used for advertising purposes, or if there's any, any other reason that might offend the moral rights for the, for the artist, then we always contact the artist first before we give permission. And in the end, when everything is okay, we, we uh, grant permission for the, for, the, for the users, we build the client, and then we pay the artist. This is the process in a very simple way. Exhibition remuner remuneration right is the second source of uh, royalties that we collect. Uh, this right is based on Copyright Act, and it means uh, situations when artwork is exhibited publicly for 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 a certain public, and this uh, this <laughs> differs from exhibition fees or from exhibition salaries that you might have heard or uh, or um, or seen, because the exhibition fee and exhibition salary they normally um, cover other type of work that the artist does for the exhibition, for example, participating uh, the designing process for that exhibition or, or doing the set, set up for the exhibition. Normally these fees cover, cover that part, but exhibition remuneration right is, uh, is based, on, based on law. Every visual artist has a right to get royalties when, when their work is um, exhibited. The only requirement is that the artwork is owned by the artist because uh, when the artist sells the artwork, this right expires. The new owner can actually show the artwork free of charge publicly. For example, museum collections can be shown to the public free of charge because the artist doesn't have this ex exhibition remuneration right anymore. We get uh, reports of ex exhibition reports or, or exhibition notices uh, when the exhibition is realized by the state uh, or municipalities, for example, in a museum, mm. or if the exhibition has an entrance fee. Uh, so uh, the exhibition organizer normally reports the exhibition to us if they are. Who was the client involved in that certain exhibition? We have a new price list uh, um, on our website. If you don't uh, become Kuvastas member, you can always check our price list and use it as a reference when you're negotiating about an exhibition. Uh, that can be used as a reference. Um, but if you are a Kuvasta client, then you can always mention that when you're do, actually doing the exhibition agreement, that Kuvasta represents you, and then the organizer knows that um, they need to report that exhibition to us, and we will collect the royalties on, on your behalf. You don't have to negotiate about that with the organizer. Um, there are some other copyright aspects as well um, related to exhibitions. I mentioned earlier that the copyright is limited uh, concerning exhibitions. So, so images of artworks that are exhibited, uh, they can be used for communications and marketing purposes before and during the, during the exhibition. And this can be done free of charge. Of course, moral rights need to be respected. The artist's name has to be mentioned and the work cannot be changed without artist, artist permission. But however, if there are any selling item, uh, items or any exhibition program where the artworks will be broadcasted, for example, uh, on a U on YouTube video or or in this kind of like a live streaming session, then uh, then all of these need actually approval from artists, and this need to be settled in the exhibition agreement. We, we do this licensing process on behalf of Kuvasta's clients, but if you're not a Kuvasta client, you should actually uh, negotiate about this, because you're entitled to royalties 
if, if your artworks are used in this way. And last, um, we all know that exhibition visitors, they take images in, in exhibitions and then they share the images online too. Uh, you should uh, discuss about, about, this right to, about this right with the exhibition organizer. Um, because sharing images online actually uh, requires approval or the artist's permission. And you can give it to the exhibition organizer and then the organizer actually will inform the audience that they are allowed to take images in the exhibition and they can share them also online. And they can also remind the audience that the artist's name has to be mentioned with the images because that's really important otherwise there's no publicity for the artist artist at all so if if only images are shown um, we're actually coming to the end of end of my uh, presentation the third important re, uh, royalty source of royalties is the resale right and this is, uh, these royalties are something that we collect on behalf of all artists here in Finland, uh, both Finnish and foreign artists. The criteria is that the um, copyright is still valid, it, the work is still uh, protected by copyright, and the work is being sold in a... Uh, the, the work is being sold second time, because this right doesn't doesn't uh, apply to first sales at all. It applies to sales after that, that happen after the first sale. And also the sale, art sale, has to be professional and public. Uh, when all these criteria are met, then we, um, then 5% uh, is deducted from the sales price. And the price needs to be over two, uh, 255 euros. If, uh, if the price is less, then these royalties are not collected. So that's, um, uh, that, need, that criteria needs to be met as well. And this is something that is harmonized in EU. That means this right is the same in every European Union country at the moment. If your artwork is uh, sold in, uh, in France, for example, it's the same thing. They will they will collect the royalties from the sales there, the same way that uh, royalties are collected in Finland, for example. And this free right because we collect it uh, here on behalf of all artists. You don't need to actually become who was this client to get this get these royalties because that's we automatically collect these uh, royalties on behalf of everybody. Mm, some other activities that, that we do, we have, I mentioned that we have a network of sister societies. Um, we have almost in every European un Union country we have a sister society and we, pre we represent their clients here in Finland. We do a lot of uh, influencing work on legislation with our sister societies. Then we give free advice on copyright matters uh, to artists and, and to users of it as well. This is free of charge. So you can send us an email or a phone or there's even an online form that you can fill, fill in and send, send us a question about copyright. And then Kuvasta uh, mm, mm, gives grants they are called BSEC grants for visual artists. Uh, these are copyright based grants and actually our application period for this year just ended yesterday. But uh, this application period is, um, takes place every year in November and you can apply, every visual artist can apply these grants for, for artistic work. Mm. And last, uh, this is just an example that what we have been doing uh, socially. Uh, we are one of the builders in a building project called Ars Longa. This is a senior senior house for visual artists in Kalasatama. Um, 
there are four mem uh, four parties that has built uh, have built this um, Arsalonga house, and now now it's situated in Kalasatama. And it provides this kind of like moderate accommodation or moderate rental flats for uh, senior visual artists for to live and work in that building. But that's um, that's my presentation today. Um, you can see my contact information here, uh, and also you can find us uh, from Facebook and Twitter with with our name and. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, on our website, kuvasto.fi, the English introduction is still quite short, but this is something that we are aware of, that we really need to do something about it. Because there are a lot of English-speaking visual artists living and working in Finland too, that, that, uh, that, are, uh, that should know about Kuvasto and, <laughs> and about copyright, of course. If you have any questions, or if you want to have a break and then uh, ask questions, that's fine with me, but um, uh, uh, what do you say about Yes, that? yes, I, I think there will be questions, so we can ask of course to the people present here, do you have, or we don't have at the moment online, um, do you want to maybe I, I you should come here to be heard um, better, or I can. Um, or maybe you can just the microphone that, say. Over there, not here. I, yeah. okay. I just want to ask uh, about the difference uh, between Teosto and Kuvasta. Well, uh, Teosto and Kuvasta, we are actually quite, quite the same. Even though Teasto is a much bigger association and they've existed a longer time than Kuvasto, but Teasto represents musicians and musicians only. But basically, we do the same thing that we collect royalties on behalf of artists and then we pay the artists. We are just, uh, we represent only the visual artists like uh, painters and uh, graphic artists and photographers and that sort of media artists and performance artists and uh, all all artists who are work in that in work in that field. But otherwise uh, we 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 license um, we license the use of artworks in pretty much the same way as Deosto does. Our agreements are of course a little bit different. Um, the uh, clients are restaurants, uh, beauty salons, or taxi drivers that they <laughs> where they have music. Mm -hmm. And Katalisti also now is the <laughs> yeah yeah of course we have this as well Me yes. media lupa or you yes. of course if you want to to mm -hmm. have something yes. on on uh, YouTube and so on. Yes. Uh, yeah yeah no well, but the way of course it represents also composers themselves or, yes. or music creators so yes. in that sense I know or we know uh, a bit about um, yeah I had a couple of other questions uh, um, because uh, is Kuvasto supporting in some ways uh, association as uh, the Finnish society or, or visual artist or well, do you have a relation or what kind of um. Supporting well, uh, our support for the visual arts is actually the work that we do um, when we do lobbying, for example, on legislation. That's one sort of a, yes. uh, support, and then um, these visa grants that I mentioned. That's also one form how we support visual art, yeah, visual art field uh, and visual artists. Uh, this year, it was. Uh, the grants were together 77,000 euros that, that are actually, in total, that's, that will be given to our visual artists as grants. And they vary from 1,000 euros, euros to 3,000 euros normally, the grants. 
And of course, this building project that I mentioned, Art Aslong Senior House, that is also one example of how we support this visual art, uh, art field and also other artist associations that, that we are. Um, uh, we are one of the fun, like funders, or how do you, that we yes. we provide funding for Ex this kind exactly. of exactly. Yeah. So that was the question also. So yeah. that, that you partly provide funding for these associations yes. or like a, yes. yes, in in this kind of yeah. projects. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, and I'm sure most of us know about these basic applications okay. and so on. So is that's it true. for for all the visual arts? Or, or yes, uh, yeah. except um, for example, um, festivals. This kind of like um, mm, there are all sorts of like art festivals. Normally, it's 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 only for professional artists themselves or artist groups that can apply. We don't uh, give grants to festival festival organizers or curators, for example, or. Uh, also, the movies uh, are excluded from visa grant grants. There's kind of movies that are, you know, commercial movies, not, which are not considered as and visual art. Yeah. Sorry. Performances. Performances. Uh, performances. Yes. Yes. They are. Uh, mm -hmm. You can apply. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we have many performances artists. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, of course, and uh, and video art, I guess. Video yeah, art, yes, easy. yes, but also mm -hmm. painting. Yeah, this kind of uh, uh, paint. Uh, yeah, photographers. Um, if you have a project related to sculptures or or um, graphic art, you can apply. Even uh, comic artists have been able to receive these grants. So th this is a. Um, Actually, quite wide field <laughs> that visa grants apply to. Yeah. Next year. Yes. yes, next year. Yes. Next, uh, uh, next November. Yeah, yeah. And for us, of course, uh, it's interesting to know or important to know. So you can apply as an individual artist, of course, and can a, an association be part of Kubast or? Um, not an association, but an artistic group. And in that artistic group, everybody needs to be visual artists. So. You cannot, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, that rule is that if you have an artistic group that you are, you have a project, uh, you are doing an artwork, for example, together. You all need to be visual artists. They cannot be, for example, um, uh, what should I say, producer. a producer, <laughs> a producer, for example. <laughs> yes, that that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, and but uh, in a way. Could there be like uh, some collective agreement, as you said, if uh, we produce an exhibition, or um, uh, you mean related to visa grants or no, uh, not to the grant? No, as um, I thought uh, of Cuvasto in general. Ah, so okay. is it possible to join Cuvasto as an association or to have an agreement, like um, some collective agreement? Um, yes, we have. Um, uh, our members are all art, are all art associations. Yes. So, basically, if you're an uh, art association and you c you're a sort of a national association, you can apply to become a member of Kuvasto. Yeah. Yes. And all these mm -hmm. uh, member associations, they have a representative in our uh, in our board. So, mm -hmm. you become like a. Our board member then yes so. yes and in that sense all the members would would uh, have these rights that you were talking about or like no it's not no. automatically all okay. art, all artists need to decide themselves if they, if they yeah. want to become Kovasta's client mm. so for example Ave Art is the new the new newest <coughs> member but uh, this doesn't mean that all Ave Arki members the visual artists are our clients the yeah. artists themselves they can decide if they if they join Kuvasta or not. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and uh, obviously you said for lobbying proposing proposals and information and so on or uh, which other 
advantages does an association get to be part of Kuvasto? Um, of course, you will be uh, part of the decision making, making process in Kuvasto uh, as a member. Um, there's a there's a lot of information about copyrights and also um, well it's about improving improving the rights for the visual artists so you would be yeah. part of that work how we how we try to improve that situation for visual artists here in Finland yeah, mm. yeah that's of course important that's very important yeah. mm. of course um, so are there other questions from the table <laughs> yes uh, we have a bit more time. Oh, yeah, I, have to go there. I just wanted uh, to ask if it is possible to tell us a little bit more about the vision of this house of visual art. Uh, can you can you tell us some something about it? Well, uh, this is so such a such an early early stage that unfortunately not. There's not that much to tell yet, but um, basically the idea is that um, um, it would be this kind of a joint building where we could have uh, either one big exhibition space for all art associations that are situated in the building, or the other option would could be that that uh, we own a building and there are more exhibition spaces for all these art associations that are uh, that own that building uh, but basically the idea is to offer uh, something for the something for the citizens here in Helsinki they can come and enjoy art and also uh, we could provide um, like uh, services for visual artists in a diff different way when we can uh, sort of uh, join our <laughs> forces <laughs> with with small art associations. We have um, more space and uh, more resources to do things together. That's that's one of that are the ideas behind it. But it's such an early stage, so I can't really say yet. But I think it's very important because uh, getting back to the summer when it was possible to travel a little bit, we went to Oslo and there is this museum of uh, intercultural arts and uh, mm, all of the works that are exhibited there uh, are from the, um, the, 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 the original is the immigrant work or somehow international collaboration. And um, for me, it was a pity that we don't have anything like this in, uh, in Helsinki. And I think that for our artists, Katalisti artists, it would be a very good platform to introduce themselves to the art field and to, to show the, the activity. And yes, it will enrich a, a, a lot. The, the the diversity of Finnish art field. Yes, um, the I think that if you're interested in uh, hearing more about this uh, house building project, or it's not possibly it, it's a house project. We don't know if if something will be built or if it's a if it's an already existing building. But you could contact actually the Finnish Artist Association because they are the they are uh, sort of um, project managers for this for this project. So yeah. you can yes, um, yeah, yes. Actually, no. I must say, <laughs> but we uh, we got an invitation, or I will be in a meeting in, in these days. Yes. So yeah. so yes. Then right. I okay. hope we are we are on the page. <laughs> like <laughs> yes. Um, no, and then, then uh, that's true. It was also very interesting to hear about this Arts Longa project. Uh, do you know when the house will open, or is it Actually, already? Yes, it's already opened. Uh, it's it's opened um, almost one one year ago, but it's really new project, and we yeah. um, 
uh, we found that a very important project because uh, um, yes, uh, artists they need of course working spaces and that was one way to support artists and it's a mutual building for writers, uh, designers and visual artists they share that building together and actually they have a they have a gallery there as well and you can google it it's it's called Arslona yeah and, great. and is it possible to apply there or yes yeah. i think the original uh, requirement was that uh, the artist needs to be over 55 but i think they lowered that and now it's probably 45 <laughs> years uh, so um I I don't because we are we are owners of that building project. I don't uh, have the current information how often you can actually apply the flat there. Yeah. But you can you can uh, Google Arslong and they have all that information on their website. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Very important information. Um, I'm sure now one thing that I would still maybe like to hear even more and I think for our our members it is maybe the most important thing or what we actually it is how we got to know you or about this uh, it is uh, can you tell again uh, in simple words uh, what happens you know when there is an exhibition and so how the rights are calculated or what is the minimum fee for for an artist who has a work in an exhibition how is that calculated Mm. Well, uh, well, we have a new. Well, considering the royalties, we have a price list, and uh, uh, normally the royalties are cal calculated so that we take into account the period, the duration of that exhibition, uh, how many artists there are all together, and and also how many visitors that exhibition place has had the previous years. That's just kind of like, <laughs> um, how would you say, mathematical uh, way, to, way to calculate the royalties. But basically, this is just one way to calculate royalties. If, you're, if, you're, uh, if you represent yourself, this is su just something that you need to negotiate with, with, the, uh, with the exhibition organizer. But you can always use our price list as a reference. You can actually calculate it yourself and use our online form because that will actually calculate that the royalties. You just uh, fill in the information, the duration of that exhibition, and uh, how many how many other artists there will be. Because um, just to give you an idea, if um, if the exhibition is less than 60 days, um, there has been uh, less than 10,000 um, 10, um, people in that museum, for example, last year. And there is one, only one artist, yourself, exhibiting works. Then the royalties would be 1,300 uh, 1, euros altogether. But these are only the royalties. In addition, if you do some other work for that exhibition, you you will be part of the uh, exhibition program, for example. You will be there giving an artistic talk, for example, for the exhibition uh, visitors. You're entitled to an exhibition fee or an exhibition salary as well. Or if you're actually putting your works on the wall yourself, you, you're entitled to a salary. So these royalties and salary, they don't exclude, exclude each other. You are entitled to both of them. Yes, and, and this salary, uh, you also have the prices on the website or uh, how is no. that calculated? Um, we, don't, we don't collect salaries on behalf of artists. Artists normally negotiate this part of, part of the agreement themselves. But there are, um, I think on Finnish Artists Association, you can find uh, examples how to negotiate about the salary when you have an exhibition coming up. So they might they might have. And of course there's this uh, in it's Finnish 
in Finnish it's called Reilun Taiteen Manifesti, Fair Art Manifest. I don't know if you have heard of it, but it's a campaign that uh, Taige is promoting. Um, they, I think they have examples of contracts, Contract, contracts or agreements here, uh, how you can actually negotiate about a salary or royalties. When somebody is uh, ordering a work from you or, or you are exhibiting or performing your work, for example. So that's Fair Art Manifest. Yeah. It's uh, good to check. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is definitely important. Yeah. Um, any other questions for <laughs> our co organizers in Global Arts Point? Thank you for. Yeah, collaborating for these or from uh, the artist present. Too many questions now. I <laughs> will have to browse everything. Yeah, and yeah, I then I then then get we can always email you. Email you. <laughs> yes, yes, we can email, email and phone. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So if there are, oh, there will be more, uh, more, more questions. Actually. Okay. And it's about copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. Like most of the time when I'm Maybe. photographer as well. Yes, uh, it's uh, coming there. So. so <laughs> Yeah. Whenever there is a person who get concerned about copyright, it's when actually his picture has been used in a purpose that he didn't want it to be. Yes. And then start the process of like, what can I do then? And most of the time the argument end up by, well, I will remove the picture from wherever it is, or I will remove the product on which your picture is being used. And this is where I've seen the problem being settled down, meaning that whether it's ignorance, that the person did not know that the art needed to be paid, yes. or it's just because, you know, who cares? I can use like any art until mm -hmm. I get caught. So is there in Finland a way to actually go about that thing? Can anything be done once the art has been used and the artist hasn't been getting any remuneration? Uh, well, for example, if you're, um, if you're uh, our client, then we can actually do something about it, and we can we can bill bill the user. Actually, we can send a bill to the user, and and um, yeah, in that in ten, in that sense, we can help. Otherwise, we can give uh, ad, advice ad, advice on copyright matters. But basically, it's it's up to you. Uh, in uh, in that case. You can always send a bill, but it might be more difficult. And of course, uh, a court case is also uh, possible. But for I understand it very well that for an independent and independent visual artist, it's really like a big decision to take some some matter to the, to a court level. But that's if it's a really serious infringement, then of course that's an option as well to take that into a court and uh, but basically those are the options I would say uh, if you're a member of association like Kuvasta then it's easier to do something about it because you have more muscles in a way but um, yeah otherwise I just uh, I just uh, would advise that you 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 keep on uh, being in contact with that user and and uh, try to get the payment that you're entitled to. Mm. I do think that there is few categories of people and one is like they know the system very well and they know that for artists it's a burden to go and hit, yes. like to go legally, yes. like legal action and they rely on that thing and as far as I'm concerned I've gave up mm. because this is too much of my time. This is too much of my energy, and, yes. and it's a it's a maze. I can't. I don't know what to do at some point. Mm. And yeah, we do. We did some performances. Didn't get paid. Send bills. Didn't get paid. Send re um, what a reminder. Mm. Yes. With like and no, nothing happened, and they just disappear. Were they private users or yeah? Like, they were. Right, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, this is the reality. Yes, in mm. in theory, that's like you're you're doing exactly the way you should 
actually that you should do it. but the, I know the reality is tough the, uh, and especially I think with when you're doing um, if that happens with uh, companies for example I think it's much easier sometimes yeah companies have been like <laughs> they're much more uh, they are much more professional yes, in that sense. yes but it, with private persons it's it's much more complicated I understand that very well and Unfortunately, I don't have any like quick solutions no, to I give you like how to how could you um, mm, end up in a solution that you that you get uh, the payment without less effort. But yeah. And I think anyone who can put up a website nowadays doesn't realize that they need to check the copyright of some of their art. So they are like putting their own private website like Weeblix or whatever and they go and use some picture or they go and use some art like drawing or illustration that things are cool which they are and then they don't realize like hey you know you're actually like promoting yourself or you're promoting your dance company yes and yes. you probably should like check whose art you're using yes. but they are just like you know I don't have that time and it's not completely false you don't always have time to actually look for whose art it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just like, I've been doing my research, I've been doing for half an hour trying to find out who that person is, yes. can't find it, half an hour is as much of my time as I'm ready to invest, Yes. then let's it be. So there's plenty of people who are using art not knowingly, yes. like who they are not yes. like completely dishonest. To their ignorance. As to well. their ignorance. Yeah. And I don't know, it's also in the politics, like, is it a person I want to support with my art? Mm. Or is it a person or a political direction that I really don't want to support mm. and I don't want my art to be associated to them? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, if this kind of thing happens to, to our clients, uh, normally we get, uh, the artist informs us that, okay, now my work has been infringed or I haven't, take, I haven't given permission for this kind of use. Then we actually um, we actually discuss with the artist what what the artist wants us to do, and after that we contact the the person or the company who has been using the image mm -hmm. without permission, and then we have, sometimes it's just uh, that the artist wants to wants it to be taken down, and 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 they will uh, they want the royalties from that, and that's okay. Then then we'll pro provide that information to the user. But so sometimes if it's ignorance, just pure ignorance, then we just give a license and we agree on it. Okay. Yeah. And then everybody's happy in the end. But uh, that's why we also do these communications about copyright, to, to increase awareness, to have less these situations where, where uh, people use uh, art because they just aren't aware of copyright. So do you have the lawyers who are taking care of you? Um, we collaborate with lawyers, yes. If there's a, if there's a, sometimes um, mm, difficult, matters. difficult matters, but basically uh, we haven't been to court uh, due to infringement things. We have been in court in, due to art sales, for example when um, art sellers have, have not paid uh, mm, this resale rights for artists. That's a different thing. But often it helps that uh, if an artwork has been infringed, infringed uh, it helps that we just contact the person and tell that we represent the Copyright Society, Kuvasta, and uh, unfortunately you have been using this image without artist permission and you need a permission to do this. And normally that, that's, that helps already. And I would say, I would say uh, maybe 70% of these cases, they end up well. Like, yeah. And the rest, is, the rest are a little bit more difficult, but we haven't been to court in this kind of uh, cases. Good questions. <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if we don't have other comments or questions, we thank very much Kati Perkonen for being with us. And uh, yeah, I hope we'll be in touch soon. And of course, as we said, we, you can contact her via email. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> Thanks to you.